Hi ho, Andrew here, and today I would like to teach you how to use the following graph to help us find the function for the polynomial. So it turns out that we can kind of use this simple model to help us out, all right? So what I want you to do is write this down. f of x will equal some leading coefficient c multiplied by some factors, and we'll write x plus or minus a, x plus or minus b, and then x plus or minus c, and I'll write a little dot, dot, dot. Now these two, the, the, I realize I wrote down two Cs, but they, they are not the same. I'll put that coefficient C in a different color, all right? Um, it turns out that we might have several of these factors. Uh, we might have two of them, we might have three of them, we might have four, I mean, it all depends, all right? But the whole idea here is that, and also, by the way, maybe we'll put little, I'll put little number signs up here, okay? Little number signs. Not to say that they're the same, but, the, we got to figure out three basic things, the leading coefficient, the values inside these factors, and then the powers. Okay, those are the three things. So what we'll do first, we'll save the coefficient for the end. Let's find the factors first. Now the factors are always found uh, by identifying the x-intercepts. Okay, so that's going to be the first step. So first thing, just find the, and I'll change the color. First thing is to just find the x-intercepts, okay, x-intercepts. So it looks like I have two x-intercepts here, right? One at negative one. So the x value was equal to negative one. And then another one at number at two, right? X is equal to two. Now the factors that give rise to these x-intercepts, right? You know that basically you would have to change the sign, right? That this uh, x-intercept came from a factor of x plus one, right? And this one came from a factor of x minus two. Right, because you know that when you take these factors and then you set them equal to zero, basically, so x plus one equals zero, you would subtract one from both sides and x is equal to negative one, right? That's how you would have arrived at that x-intercept, okay? So basically what you can do right now is I would take these x values and plug them on in for your not x in the formula, but your a and your b and your c, etc. okay? The only thing you gotta remember is to just change the sign of them. All right, so if this is negative one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that and plug it in and make it positive. So positive one here. And then I'm going to do the same thing in the second one. I'm gonna erase that half and I'm gonna write negative two, okay? And there's no other x-intercepts, so actually what I'm gonna do is just erase the remaining part of this, okay? Now, I was gonna ask, are there any questions, but then I realized you're I mean, you could respond, write me a comment below, um, but um, I definitely won't get it live. So what I now need to do is I have to identify uh, the multiplicity, okay, or the behavior around these x-intercepts, all right? So step number two will be to identify the multiplicity. Now, it turns out that I, I approach these problems in different ways, in different videos, same topic, uh, because, you know, maybe one way will click better with someone than another way. So if you're watching another video of mine, you're like, oh, he did it differently. Yes, I did, um, because I'm just trying to show you that there's more than one way to approach a problem. I was going to say to skin a cat, but that's just weird. That's just weird, and you should never do that. Um, I don't even know why that's a saying. Anyway, um, but we got to find the multiplicity. So the multiplicity now of this x-intercept, okay, we have to ask ourselves whether it bounces off, okay, whether it bounces off the x-axis or whether it crosses that x-axis. If it gives a little bounceroo, okay, if it bounces, then you have an even multiplicity, okay, even. And if it crosses, as it does over here, which just crosses completely, then you have an odd multiplicity, okay? And you can also kind of memorize these cases, right? If you have an even power or even multiplicity, Multiplicity is kind of tomato tomato with the term power. All right, um, they use different terms. They mean different things. If math isn't confusing enough, sometimes the language is very confusing. Um, but basically, uh, if you notice, anytime you have an even power or an even multiplicity, you see how it does a little bumper ruski, right? Either direction it does a little bumper ruski. And then if you have an odd power, right? You see how it does a little crosser ruski, right? In both cases, a little crosser ruski. So. That'll help you determine whether it's even or odd. Now, the problem is, well, you're like, okay, that's great. I know it's even, but, you know, Andrew, I mean, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, you know, what number? And I, that's great. I know it's odd, but, you know, what number? Well, 
in the problem, it says the least degree. Okay, it would almost be very, it would be very, very difficult to differentiate between. Now, uh, it's not that bad to differentiate between the second power and the fourth power. All right, and um, oh my God, there goes my front door. And the mailman. And the mailman, both the front door and the mailman, have now went to the other side. Um, sorry, mailman. Sorry. So it's very hard to differentiate. Anyway, back to business, right? So it's very hard to differentiate uh, between like a fourth and a sixth power, etc. But it isn't that hard to differentiate between a second and a fourth power. And the reason for that uh, is because the flatter this thing gets when it starts flattening out like that, that's when you start having higher powers, like fourth and sixth. These would be very hard to differentiate, but second power is kind of, you know, this looks like the standard quadratic, okay? In any case, is he driving away? All right. So the mailman's still alive. Okay. Or somebody stole the mail truck. One of the two. I'm not really sure. But anyway, um, so most likely there's going to be an even multiplicity. So now for this particular factor here, all right, um, or this particular, I should say, x-intercept, we would have a power, an even power of 2. All right, so I'm going to plug that in as a 2. Remember, why am I plugging in the 2 for this factor? Well, because this factor came from this x-intercept, right? Now, the same thing here. This is odd. The uh, This is definitely going to be to the first power. Once you start having to the third power, you start getting this little snake-like uh, looking thing, okay? Um, it's not. It doesn't uh, cross like perfectly. I mean, it still crosses, but it snakes a little bit. So if you don't have a snake, it's to the first power, all right? And if you do have a little snakiness to it, then it'll be to the third and the fifth and the seventh, but those are very then hard to differentiate between. In any case now, this is what we're working with, okay? So that's what we got. Um, the only last piece now is to then take into account the uh, y-intercept. And we need to find the y-intercept of this function because we have to find this leading coefficient, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I found the y-intercept, all right? So the y-intercept here, is going to be uh, y is equal to 2. And all we're going to do now, all right, remember, there's something unique about this y-intercept. You know both the x and the y-coordinates of that point, right? Every time you have a y-intercept, the x value is 0, and the y-value will be, well, some number. Maybe it'll be 0, 2, um, 0 as well, I mean, meaning 2 as T-O-O. -O. Um, uh, but in here, in this particular case, the value is indeed 2, T-W-O. Okay. So... What we're going to do now is we're going to take this formula and we're going to plug in 2 for our y value or our f of x value. We're going to leave c alone, all right, and we're going to plug in zeros everywhere we see x. So 0 plus 1 squared, 0 minus 2 to the first power, but you can leave that out. Let's start simplifying this a little bit, right? So you're uh, inside of that parenthesis, that's going to be a 1 squared, and then this is just a minus 2, right? 1 squared is just going to be 1. 1 multiplied by negative 2 is simply going to be negative 2. So what you're arriving at now is you're having 2 is equal to a c multiplied by a negative 2 value. Right, and if you have to solve for c, what do you divide by? Negative 2, both sides. Cancels out. So now finally, lo and behold, you're going to get your c value being equal to negative 1. Now, that's the c value. That's what you're going to plug in here, okay? So you can go back and erase this boom, and plug in negative 1. Now, you don't need the 1, right? You can just plug a negative sign in. And that's it now. This is the function. This function, if you graph this now in your calculator, all right, you will see that this matches uh, this particular function right here. Now, um, you know, whether you need it in factored form or whether you have to now, you know, foil this thing, that totally depends. But the, I mean, the problem is basically over. We don't really know what form we want it in, standard form or factored form or whatever the heck the words are. Um, but in this particular case, this should be sufficient. So that's all there is to it. Thanks guys for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this helps. And uh, if it does, like and subscribe. Maybe even tell some of your classmates or your friends. And um, let's all pray for the mailman. Take care.